you know, I, they were, you know, a good, healthy part of the process. It was a great opportunity to get to, you know, clearly it's very public. We met with Garrett Cole in Strasburg while I was on the West Coast, um, at least. That's what you all are aware of so far. Who knows who I met with? But um, but anyway, it was a good opportunity to to meet you know some amazing competitors uh, that we've seen uh, do great things from afar. So uh, so got a chance to give them the opportunity to get to know us and uh, and we got a chance to get to know them a lot better too. So very impressive personnel. Did you meet with anybody else? Wouldn't say. Just throw that out there. Keep you guys all, <laughs> the guys and gals, all uh, guessing. As far as your contingent, was you, Aaron, Matt Blake, and Andy Pettit? Is that uh, right? And Mike Fishman. Okay. Yeah. When you met with them, did you get any gauge of a time frame on what the process would be with them? No. Okay. No. Yeah. So, uh, you know, again, it was, you know, I think it was an important part of the process for them. Um, it sounds like they've met with many of many of teams, um, and uh, you know. So obviously, I, I can't predict the future and the timing of their future is only really they control that. So, um, but but again, it was you know, hopefully it was a trip uh, at the very least. You know, um, you know, I'll cross paths with them if there was somebody else down the line, and and uh, you know, uh, be in a position at least to. You know, say hello, but uh, at the very most, it might lead to something. You know, so, you will be in their neighborhood next week. Was there any setting up of meeting them again next week or at any time? Wouldn't, wouldn't uh, say. Um, but uh, obviously, I'll be flying back out um, after this event, and in the meantime, staying in gates. Like you know, I took the red eye back and was in the office all day yesterday, and and uh, we'll stay connected. <laughs> today through the weekend and, and then on a plane I'll be in San Diego by by early morning on or late morning on uh, Monday and um, you know uh, I'm open to do clearly whatever you know as always is important for the Yankees if there's certain steps that need to be taken conversations on the phone you know uh, you know like any club you know we're we're fully a bit prepared, prepared to, to do what's necessary text phone in-person meetings, what have you, but it's very volatile circumstances, as everybody knows. That, you know, with with 29 other clubs, you know, looking for ways to improve themselves, um, it's very hard to predict timing of anything, and and certainly, uh, you know, when when agents and players are doing their job the best of their abilities in this negotiating market, uh, they never tip their hands about what really is going down and how you know it's going to go down. It just you know, sometimes you're fortunate to land the, you know, what you're looking for, and other times it doesn't work out. So we're just not sure what category we will fall in on this. What's okay. the sentiment? Uh, Cole is from Southern California. There's appears to be two Southern California teams interested in him, and Strasburg has spent his whole career with, with the Nationals. Seems to be has been very uh, content there. Do you sense you have a, a geographic disadvantage with either or both of these guys? Yeah, it's really a question for you know. It's not from my end, you know. Uh, I think it's not, it's hard for me to gauge that, uh, you know, I, I think that the players from their perspective are really, you know, they've worked hard to get to free agency. They spend a lot of time and effort to put themselves in a great position, which, which in their cases, uh, they've done, you know, a great job putting themselves in, a, in an enviable position. Uh, and so ultimately I think they just like all players in free agency, they want to really gauge the pure landscape and all the opportunities that really exist. And then, you know, they're going to give whatever weight to, to location, uh, league, uh, team, teammates, you know, that they want to give, um, you know, whether it's West, Midwest, uh, East, you know, there, there's so many factors that are going to go into, I'm sure, their decision making. And, you know, it's, it creates an amazing opportunity, but it's also, you know, I'm sure it's stressful times for them and their families too, because, you know, obviously the better you are, the more choices you really have, and you can, you know, kind of go anywhere at times. And, and so, uh, you know, I think they're, I'm sure going to be very thorough with, with, uh, with their process. So, uh, but I think, you know, the Yankees have a lot to offer. Uh, I, I'd like to think that this is a place that, that, you know, if you're, you know, you love, 
playing the game of baseball and you want to be in a competitive environment, you know, I think those ingredients, you know, what should put us on anybody's list of, of places to be interested in considering. And I think, I think at the very least, you know, we qualify for that. So you mentioned getting to know them better. What did you learn about Cole or, or Strasburg that you didn't know previously? Well, I mean, you just see what they, how they carve lineups up, but uh, you never get a chance to, to, to know better uh, the person. So uh, in both of those cases, uh, they're really good, genuine people and uh, good family people. And um, so despite their, you know, competitive nature when they had the ball on the, on the mound every five days, they, uh, you know, you walk away going, that, you know, realizing that they would fit in anybody's clubhouse in a real positive way, not just because of performance, just because of the type of people they seem to be. And, and, and Strasburg, obviously, our franchise doesn't know very well, uh, but in Garrett Cole's case, it's various members of our, our franchise, you know, Damon Oppenheimer is our scouting director still, uh, him and a number of his staff members, they obviously got a chance to know Garrett Cole because we drafted him way back when uh, we weren't able to sign him. So some of our people know Garrett Cole um, already, um, you know, on a personal level, him and his his uh, parents and stuff, but they're not, you know, not me. Um, so uh, in my case, uh, uh, that was a real first, you know, sit down uh, you where know, I got a chance to know Garrett Cole. But both, you know, people are very impressive people and, and not surprising why they're successful. Uh, you see the ability, but when you get a chance to get to know the makeup a lot better and, and uh, the people, you could just, again, they're, they're going to be very productive members of any organization. So um, we'll see what happens. Do you meet with the family at all too, or just, just the players? Um, you know, uh, Garrett's wife was there. Uh, and uh, But that was in that one meeting in Steven Strasburg's uh, meeting, it was Steven. When you um, see activity like Zach Wheeler signing, you know, this week, um, you see Moustakas get a deal before the winter meetings. What does that say to you about what the market is going to be like this year compared to the past two? It's hard to say. I mean, I don't really compare the markets. You know, it's you know, it's hard to re recall. Some years things move faster than others. Some years it's a little slower. You know, um, you know, I think it's all dictated by. You know what's available in the marketplace. If there's a, a a lot of players flooding the market via trade that are easily accessible via you know trade, then then I think it slows down the free agent market. If there, if uh, you know if, if you know the matches in free agency and with the demand, demand lineup, then you're going to move fast. If you know you know if, depending on the talent level and and the, the, how deep the pools are in various categories, and if they match a lot of needs, things can move quick. And again, if there's not a lot. It's going to move slow, and if the demands are, you know, off, then it's going to move slow. It's it, every everyone's, you know, unique in, in its own right, and I, you know, it's a hard time for me to kind of measure what globally how things play out in the industry. I just know from our end, our our focus is obviously always trying to improve the club. But you know, if we can improve the front of the rotation even more, and and I, I like our rotation. I say that, and I do. I say it though with all due respect. With I, I, I like to remind people that we do have Tanaka and Severino and Paxton and. You know, and then obviously uh, the Hermann situation isn't resolved uh, yet. You know, it's in the hands of Major League Baseball and the Players Association, but he's obviously an extreme talent. And then you have Jay Happ and you got Montgomery coming back. And so our rotation is really strong. And we got kids pushing up from the bottom uh, that are hungry to take a spot, whether it's Michael King or, or Debbie Garcia or a whole bunch of other guys. So um, we'll see. We just love to add to it if we can because it's a long season and. Uh, and so you feel always better to put your head on the pillar when you can run out one of the premier starters in the game to add to that crew that's already formidable in its own right. So, What is the sentiment from Hal and from ownership about potentially laying out a huge or potentially, potentially record-breaking contract for a pitcher? Well, I, I mean, I'm not here to talk finances and, and uh, you know, uh, so that's not something, you know, all I can tell you is it, it, the obvious. Of course, we're interested in players at this level, and we, it's not that we haven't been in the past. We always have. Um, that doesn't guarantee anything. We went through the process last year and talked to a lot of high-end quality, talented, premier, top-shelf uh, free agents. And, and, and when the dust settled, you know, we, we signed DJ LeMayhew and and, uh, and then Zach Britton and Adevino and extended some of our internal candidates. And so, you know, I think the public narrative was covering things that we were considering and talking through and walking through and, um, and competing for to some degree. And, uh, 
but you can't predict how the winters play out. You can't predict how, you know, uh, uh, how things present themselves over the course of time. So, um, so again, the winter last year started with, with a lot of speculation on, for instance, Manny Machado and Patrick Corbin, and for good reason. And, uh, and then you wind up with Troy Tulowitzki and, and uh, D.G. LeMahieu and Britton and Adovano and, and extension and money left over for extensions on Seve and, and uh, Hicks. So, um, so I don't know what this winter is going to bring, but, but we are playing the, the all-encompassing game where it's just, you know, I'm continuing to stay engaged with 29 clubs about what might be available, what they're looking for, trying to see if we have matches, and at the same time, uh, you know, engaging free agents, both high and low, and, and uh, but falling back and recognizing that we have a really great team, period, right now, even if we did nothing. And so uh, with each, with all that being considered, we're taking all the steps necessary and making, you know, sharing that information above and, and, uh, and you know, hopefully see if we can find a way to improve the club now. And if we can't, you know, we'll wait and, and try to improve it later. We just have, we have to wait and see how it shakes out. Where do things stand with your <clears throat> internal free agents, Gardner, Didi, Tansis? Uh, we, you know, staying in touch with their agents, obviously in free agency, they've got a lot of considerations clearly and opportunities um but uh you know certainly if i can wave the magic wand we'd love to have everybody back if possible but uh um but if not it's my job to line up alternatives whether it's fall back to what we have or or uh or adjust and and try something new um so but i've you know joe bick is the agent for guardy i've stayed in touch with joe um, you know, obviously Jim Murray's the agent for DD and Batanzas. We stayed in touch there. You know, obviously Billy Rose is the agent for for Romine, and so so it's just you know doing the dance that you have to do. Um, and, and in each of these cases, obviously they're really talented, quality, unbelievable people that that you know opportunities are going to be presenting themselves. Uh, you know, both here and elsewhere. And so you know, I it remains to see what happens. So I, I just can't again, just like. Just like anything in free agency, I don't know what and how it's going to play out, but mm -hmm. but we're making sure we're part of the process and sharing our content to to them and their uh, representatives, and and ultimately decisions get made. A couple of years ago, when you were here, you were wrapping up the DD trade. I think while we were pulling down the building pretty much. Are you that close on anything today? Any, uh, doing any work on going no, down the building? No, unfortunately, like, uh, you know, I, I think the DD trade we had done and he was going through medicals while I was going uh -huh. down the building. So, uh, uh, and then I, uh, sometime that weekend, I think I remember, uh, uh, holiday I got done coming off the building. Um, uh, so Matty holiday, uh, was a guy we signed to, to on a one year. Um, so, I mean, I can't predict how these things play and how fast they speed up. And um, but uh, am I going to be breaking news? If I was right now, I'd be breaking it at this moment, you know. And but I don't. I'm not going to be coming off that rope with. Uh, and I'm not going to get a text at six or seven or eight a.m. this morning saying <laughs> deal. So you know, it's not you know uh, so that's not going to happen here in the next hour or so. But but I certainly you can't predict how the the world spins here. And and you know, at some point today. You know, we're open for business when when uh, you know we find mutual common ground with you know clubs or or players and their representatives. You know, so we're you know we're ready to rock and roll at, at, at any time. And but it just takes time, unfortunately. And, and sometimes, you know, even though you go through the process with the time frames, uh, it doesn't necessarily guarantee clearly that uh, you get where you want to go.